Hello everyone, it's Justin. It's true. So, the first thing before we kind of venture off into the, you know, things that Christians need to do in order to be successful in what they're doing. Because again, it's different principles that we have to follow than a lot of times what the world is. So, but one of the first things you need to do is to be ready. So what do I mean by that? I mean, be ready as in be in a state of readiness. If God is calling you to be in a certain location or amongst a certain group of people or whatever it is, then if you're full of butter and salt and you're in the hospital, chances are you're not going to be able to actually go there. So the thing that you need to do is keep in mind is keeping your body in a state of readiness and thinking of yourself in a state of readiness at all times. So that readiness requires about five things. I'm just going to go over those really briefly. First thing is that is going to be cutting back on your sugar. Okay. I know it's everywhere, but cutting back on your sugar. I didn't say quit because sugar is actually 16 times more addicted than cocaine. So I'm having mercy here. Cut way back on your sugar. Okay. Second thing, get yourself a multivitamin because the food here in America, if you're in America, the food here in America in particular is actually so over harvested that it does not have a lot of the nutrients and things like that that you're actually going to need in order to get the proper nutrients your body needs in order to function properly. Okay, so get yourself a multivitamin that has phytonutrients in it, something like that. Uh, make sure that it is not a scam because the supplement game is not regulated by the FDA. So make sure that you are <laughs> getting a supplement that is proven, that works, that is maybe even volunteer FDA regulated. Third thing you want to do, you want to do local meats. Fourth thing you want to do, local vegetables. And the fifth thing you want to do is cut back on your stress. And the way that you cut back on your stress is that you fundamentally dwell and live by what God said, not by circumstances. We see where Jesus said, I'm going to be back three days later. We fundamentally see him say, we hear him say this. And they did not believe him and they went back sad and depressed after he was crucified because the evidence is not in the circumstance. The evidence is what has been spoken over any and all circumstances. So if you think that God is calling you towards something or he gave you a word or whatever it may be, then that's all there is to it. It doesn't matter the situation. If you spoke something like wealth over you, whatever it is, it's impossible for you to be broke outside of improper management. But if you're on your assignment, if you're doing those type of things, it's impossible for that to happen. So you need to look at what God is saying as the end all be all and that everything will conform to his word so that he is not a liar, that he is saying truth, and that there is nothing in him that is going to be, I need to lie. That's not who God is, because he ceases to be God if he lies. So therefore, when he says something that is greater than evidence. So, you don't have to worry about stress, about this situation, that situation. It's what he said that is the actual final say. So then that way, you can reduce on your stress and then reduce on your inflammation because stress causes a lot of inflammation in your body and inflammation is essentially one of the bedrocks of all other disease because it's sticky and it actually compresses your cells and it can even cause cancer and things like that so then once again review go back on your sugar get a phytonutrient multivitamin some kind of supplement local meats, local vegetables, and then reduce back on your stress or hang on the word of God. All right, that's my time. I'll catch you on the remix. Bye-bye.